expressed interest in wanting to learn how I do that and it's really simple. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has ever looked into it before but it's pretty much a combination of um, linseed oil and wax. So I make this mixture ahead of time and then pigment which I have here, raw pigment, which you can order online or you can get at art stores. I get mine mainly from Sinopia in San Francisco, and I can post about that later if people are interested. Hi Alex, if you are watching. Um, yeah, it's a great shop in San Francisco, and Alex has been providing pigments for artists for a really long time, and I've recently gotten to know him, and it was it, he, he's just a great guy, and if you have any questions, he's happy to answer. But um, yeah, so what I have here is my setup, which contains a large glass palette. You can use something much bigger if you want. I kind of just have these small, um, I guess they're like a quarter inch or yeah, I think quarter inch slab of glass. And it's just really thick. And then I have molars here. <laughs> um, these were hand blown by my uh, friend, Jess Wayner, who is a glass artist. And she was, you know, kind enough to, to make these for me. So when I do workshops, I have them. Um, and so they're tempered on the bottom. And this is also tempered. And what how I temper that is using carborundum, like to, which is basically sandpaper without being on paper. And so you grind that with water and you, you get a surface that is uh, coarse because you need the pigment and the oil to bond together. You don't just mix it. So there's the differences. You have paste, which is oil and the pigment together without mulling it. So when you probably, if anybody follows Gamblin, they tend to... Uh, they have those large rollers and they'll show you how they make industrial paint um, or their paint and their large roller mills and they're really cool like very satisfying to watch but this is something you can do at home um, if you have the materials which you know it takes a little bit of time to to gather all of that stuff and then to learn how to make this mixture which again is linseed oil with two percent uh, wax beeswax again is being used so the beeswax isn't totally necessary but I was taught that way by my professor Richard Raisless shout out if you're watching <laughs> um, and it is the way that it really like gives it a little bit more body and some people even add chalk to their paint when they're making it I don't I make it pure so without any kind of fillers um, I don't know if that's necessarily the right thing to do, but it, it just feels good to kind of have like something that's purely pigment and oil. And I think it really does show in my work too. There is a luminosity to the paint that a lot of people ask like, oh, what kind of paint are you using? And sometimes I'm using just regular store-bought, but I do also make my own. And sometimes I'll have just, I'll use one specific color or I make colors and today I wanted to make colors for you and I was thinking pink and green since they are my two favorite colors and in combination with each other so if you can see I have somebody manning the camera today so you can get a better visual um, I have some phthalo ultramarine and cadmium because these are kind of toxic chemicals, you should definitely wear your N95 mask when handling things. And I will put that on as soon as I start making dust. Um, you really, yeah, you need to always be cautious when 
handling such toxic materials because you you want to protect your lungs and you don't want to inhale stuff that is like heavy metals it's cancerous and it's not good so yeah is does anybody have any questions does anybody okay I don't know if I should start with the green or if I should start with the blue or the pink. Let me suit up first. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can still hear me with this mask on. Also, nitrile gloves are important because you're gonna be handling solvent. And it's just, it just makes sense to keep your hands clean so you don't track pigment everywhere. All right, so when making green, use a combination of yellow and blue. Sorry, we have street cleaning happening outside, so that's pretty loud. <laughs> And I think that this will be a very dark green. So I think I'm gonna try and achieve something that's a little brighter. So I'm gonna add some white into this and I'm just gonna mix it in to this pile. And I probably will continue to add that, add white to it. And this is a combination of so many different kinds of pigments. So you have phthalo, which is a dye. Then you have cadmium, which is a metal. And then you have titanium white, which is very heavy as well. Then you have ultramarine here. Got a question. All right, what's your question? What kind of white pigment is that? <laughs> titanium white. <laughs> Yeah. So. And I like to mix my powder up as much as possible beforehand because then it just makes things easier when I'm putting, adding the oil to it. So there's a lot of blue in that right now. I'm gonna add some more cadmium. And this is a cadmium yellow deep. Question. Yes. How much more economical is it to make your own? Uh, I don't know if it's, well, it depends. If you are going to use a very expensive pigment, it's very economical but I guess time is kind of money for most of, most of us. And so in that sense, it isn't. But for me, it's not just about economics, it's about um, understanding your material and having a deeper connection to like how things are made. And so I actually feel like I have more, um, more connection to this process of painting because I'm essentially making everything that goes into the piece. It's kind of fun to do something that has been done for centuries, you know? I think when we connect to process, we, we also connect to lineage. So me spreading this out, you can kind of see what color it might be right here. I like that color. And I might add more white. You can see it's kind of like this gray green right now and it will change when I add the oil to it. Question. 
Uh -huh. Can you stick this dry pigment to canvas with any medium? Could you stick dry pigment? To canvas with any, any medium. Yeah, you, you could. I wouldn't do that, but you could. Remember, medium is a binder, so it's going to be a vessel to hold whatever you put into it. And pigment, pigment plus a medium is usually paint. Follow-up question. Uh-huh. Um, what are some colors you purchase already mixed? Um, usually fluorescence because those are just really hard to... Um, to make because they're so light. Even this phalo is probably something that if I were to make the whole, um, like a whole tube of it, I might not want to do that in my studio because it's just so light and airy that it would create so much dust. The same thing with pure cadmium, cadmiums. Uh, yeah, you could do it, but just not my my preference also there are just some colors that some companies make that I can't seem to make on my own now I'm adding the linseed oil here and ooh, look at that green it's coming out Yeah, so this is just a mix. You're just mixing in um, the pigment into the oil right now. Someone and, was asking about the uh, glass mixers one more time. They were late. Um, okay, so I'm using a surface that is a glass palette that's like a quarter inch thick. And then I use a molar, which is a solid glass. Sorry, we have street cleaning happening outside. So it's a little loud. Um, and it's tempered. So this side is tempered and or the bottom of the molar is tempered and the top of this glass slab is tempered. And so when you um, combine them together, what happens is you are combining the oil and the pigment and it's the oil is bonding to each molecule of pigment. I don't know if molecule is the right word, but each particle of pigment. And then you have paint. So right now it is paste, like what we're making. And I really like this color and I wanted to fill up this size tube, which I will probably need a lot more paint than this. Um, so before I, I, I basically, I want to have everything that I'm going to put into this tube here before, because I'm mixing colors. And if I mixed one set of colors now, or I added all of these colors now, and then I did it again, it will probably be two different kinds of green on top of each other because I did not measure anything out. And then I'm really liking this color that's happening. Because even though it becomes a paste, it, it looks much bigger than what it will be when it goes into the tube. So I probably have this much of paint on this palette right now. It's a very time-consuming process, but it's pretty satisfying. And I probably won't show you guys how I make a whole tube because I want to show you two different colors, but I will show you how I make the paint and then how I pack it and then I'll have these colors finished and then I can use them on my painting which this is the painting I'm working on right now is and the quality of the oils uh sorry question yeah the quality of this is the same as old holland oils uh probably um because I think that they make 
they don't add any fillers to their to their stuff but they're using mills so it's probably going to be a little different and this is my own recipe so everything varies from company to company but isn't it cool to kind of have the knowledge to do something yourself versus rely on other companies for for that all right i really like this color so what i'm gonna do is gonna add more pigment to it because it's also i don't this consistency is too runny i have way too much um oil in it versus the versus the pigment but i wanted to add more anyways so we're gonna I'm just going to dump it on there. Does this have a strong smell? No, it smells like nothing besides oil. What medium would you add instead of oil to make this acrylic paint? You would use a, it's just an acrylic um, binder. So I don't have the name for it off of the top of my head, but it's, you can get it at any art store too, and I will post that. Actually, I can look for it in my the painter's handbook. If you don't have this book and you are an artist, get it. It basically has every answer to every question you could possibly have. So. Hold on, making your own paint. How do you know how much of a pigment to oil ratio? You do it based off of just seeing how it, the texture is um, and it kind of becomes a feel. Um, I'm sure that, I mean, every pigment has different oil absorptions. So if you were to become very familiar with the particular uh, pigment, like ultramarine blue is a, it just absorbs a lot of oil. So I know that I have to put a lot more oil into that when I use that versus if I were to use titanium white, it kind of soaks it up fast or you don't, it doesn't require as much oil. So some of them are different. And so when I'm making a combination color, it, it, it is all about texture. So like when you're cooking, you kind of know when something's done based off of smell and how it looks. I feel like whenever I need to see something, I can't see it because I'm trying to figure it out really fast, but I can look that up and tell you later, but it's, it's, it's an acrylic dispersion essentially. And what your process would be is you would use the pigment with water and you would make a small, you would just do this process with water instead of oil and you would put it not in a tube, but probably in a glass jar. And then when you wanted to make your acrylic paint, you would just mix the, uh, the pigment and water in with the acrylic medium. Hope that makes sense. No, it's a little. Hello from Ghana. Someone from <laughs> Ghana is watching. Cool. Question. Uh huh. Why do you need a mask? Do you need to have proper ventilation too? Uh, there's no ventilation needed. Actually, I would say probably don't have any wind or air circulation because you want, you don't want to create any dust. You want to have a dust mask on because you're dealing with pigment, which I'm sure that if I were to put something down really fast, it could become airborne and you just want to protect your lungs because these are toxic chemicals or materials. Cadmium is metal and it's actually, a, they won't sell real cadmium in stores anymore. They have a different, a different mixture, that, like a cadmium hue because it is so toxic and it's bad for the environment. This is ultramarine that we're adding on top of this. Morty oh. says hi. 
Hi, Morty. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hoping that I can get that same color that I had, this color, because I really like that. But we're going to work back into it, and we'll see what we get. It's looking pretty good. Kind of reminds me of flour, if anybody makes bread. You want to be really careful with it again because you don't want these colors to be, you don't want things flying out like this little piece. Each little pigment is valuable to me. And yes, I'm using a Carlo Rossi jack. <laughs> You know, I used to make a lot of mead and homemade ginger beer and kombucha. So I have a lot of these containers left over. I'm not doing any of that right now because I am painting a lot. All right, so this looks a little darker than what I had. Probably need, means I need more cadmium because we want like a brighter green. So more yellow. Cadmium yellow, not just cadmium. Can you guys hear that noise? Some may find it relaxing. <laughs> What is that um, video stuff that people stream where it's all noises and they get really into it? ASMR or something? Oh yeah. Everybody's like, ASMR. <laughs> relationship happening there. Isn't it just so beautiful? Delicious sludge, somebody said. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it doesn't look like sludge, but it's a, it's a really pretty green from where I'm sitting. And you know, it's funny, it's going to change again. It might be a little bit darker like this this green here, you can see. So I do have a lot of blues in there. All right, I think that's a good amount. I can like close up this here. All right, and I also use palette knives, which should probably be much cleaner than this and sharper because you want to be able to move them. But, you know, it's just me here. And I'm kind of sloppy. So you want to move all of your paint paste to the side. And I'm wondering if I, I'll, I'll do, I'll show you guys how I make the actual paint and then I'll go and I'll make the, blue, the pink mixture and then I'll show you how I make that paint too and then I think that will give you a good idea. But I'm not gonna fill this whole tube because that's a lot. So you really just wanna do a little bit at a time. And what I tend to do is have another piece of glass smaller piece of glass that I can um, 
put my stuff on because there's just going to be oil everywhere. Yeah, I like this texture. It feels loose. I could probably add more pigment to it to give it more um, body. But the way I've been painting lately, I really like it a little bit wetter. So it's not, not so thick and I don't have to add as much medium to it. All right. <laughs> Again, we have a molar, which is solid glass. They have, they have some that are made out of um, granite as well. And since now the pigment is no longer loose, I can take this off so maybe you guys can hear me a little bit better. But I'm putting my gloves back on for sure. And I don't want to hear any sex jokes because I know what this looks like. <laughs> this is actually the perfect green that I wanted. And now you can see it turning from this, which is very textured to something much creamier and smooth. You want to work it in a um, figure eight. And then kind of just go back and forth and you really really don't want to put too much on your palette right away because then you're not gonna be um having the pigment from the pat like this glass slab and the smaller and you want it to be as thin as possible do you see how thin that is and then once i feel like i've gotten the right amount of paint or texture that I like, like when it's butter. Yeah. So I'll just kind of keep taking this off and because it will collect on the sides, pulling it back in. Question. Mm -hmm. Do all colors darken as you mix them with the mixer? I would say most of the time they do. They do change a little bit because you're adding another color and it's oil, so it's wet. But yeah, like when you wet a stone, it changes color too, right? Or mud changes. And a lot of this is dirt. You can harvest pigment. There's uh, an Instagram account that I follow and she, this woman, she goes around and she uh, just harvests wild, natural pigment. I don't know why I said wild, it's just foraging. Um, and it's usually off coastal areas or in old mining camps where there's a lot of iron oxides and it's really satisfying to see her collection. All right, I think this texture is pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to scrape it up and put it in my tube. You can see how tedious this is. It's really not for everybody, but I like it. until you fill this up. Um, a lot of people have asked me how I close this, like seal the tube. What I tend to do is close it like this and then I'll fold it down and then seal it with some canvas clamps. And I could do a post like follow up 
um, because I am not a real cooking show and I don't have all of the things laid out as in stages. <laughs> I'm just doing this as, as I go. And you can kind of see this is an aluminum tube, so it's very malleable and I don't really want to close it because then I can't get it back open. And since I'm adding paint to it right now, I want it to stay open as much as possible. So, so I'm going to show you one more color and then, because I really like making pink. I don't know. Did you guys know that I like pink? Was that obvious? How do you know when you've mixed enough? Uh, I'm just going, I hope I have enough here for this tube. Sometimes I make too much and then I'll put it in a smaller tube, which is the leftover. You want to make enough to fill up something. But as you can see, this, it, it does thin out the, the paste. So this becomes like 50% smaller in volume once it's fully mealed. Mold? Mold? I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna put my mask back on because I'm gonna be handling the raw pigment again. And that's dust. We don't wanna breathe in dust. And I'm probably going to change my gloves too because I don't want any contamination of color. Love the mask. Is it custom? It is custom. Who asked that? <laughs> Art with bang. Oh, <laughs> my friend Callie made it for me for my birthday. She's a really talented artist, textile artist, and overall great person. Okay, so my favorite pink is actually from Williamsburg, and it's this Persian rose. You can look at any uh, paint, and you can, I'm going to get a different one that's a little bit cleaner. Here, here's one from... You know what? I don't know about you guys, but when I paint, oil gets everywhere, so I can't really read the labels as much right now. I guess we'll just do it from a regular titanium wipe, but on the back side of all paint tubes, they will <clears throat> list the ingredients. So you could kind of try to figure out how to make that same paint. And in the book that I referenced earlier, which is the Painting Techniques book, they have a chart in the background or in the index. They have a paint pigment index and it will tell you all about the um, variations of pigment. And when you buy it, this will be listed here too. It should. So like PR122 is the code for, or is part of the paint, the pigment index for quinacridone red. <clears throat> and here's the, you can just see how there's all of these it will just tell you about the common name, the hue, like basically if something's toxic or if it's synthetic, if it's natural, its stability, its light fat fastness. And so it's a lot of information and also how to make your own paint. Really should be in every artist's studio. Question. Yes. Do you use turpenoid or turpentine? I use Gamsol. 
I'm really sensitive to toxic materials, and if I had turp in my studio, I'd probably pass out. <laughs> Alan Inman asks, do you like turtles? Do I like turtles? Turtles. I do like turtles. How to make pink. Again, we're gonna use cadmium in here. I like doing this because it looks like an egg. I think I'm gonna do a cadmium orange too. And then cadmium red. I have not opened yet. I'm gonna go look and see if I have another red open. I'll be right back. Or you can follow me to my cabinet. Question. Yeah. How many hours do you spend in the studio each day? Do you take days off? I mean, I spend a lot of time in the studio. I don't know if all of that time is productive, but I don't usually take days off unless something's going on, you know? All right. <laughs> Look at that red. This feels like it's gonna be a little bit deeper of a pink. And I really should have another jar that I'm putting this into, but I don't right now, so. These materials are really expensive and they're all, well, they're expensive, but they're also just really toxic. So you wanna treat them carefully. All right, and now this is quinacridone magenta is what makes that pink, pink color. That's pretty satisfying <laughs> look there. I actually want to take a picture of that. So you guys are going to have to hold on for a second. <laughs> How meta, right? I'm gonna post this on Instagram. And then there's you guys. Alright. I'm feeling like there needs to be more white in here. Because remember, pink is a very light color. Okay. 
Now we go back to mixing again. And I'll see if I need to add more white to it, which it does look like I have a lot of dark colors in here. Does anybody have any other questions? A lot of hard eyes. Ooh. You guys like that? You like all that pink, huh? <laughs> How many years have you been painting? Um I don't I don't know. Like I would say seriously, probably since grad school. <laughs> but which was in twenty thirteen no, two yeah, twenty thirteen is when I graduated. So You can kind of see how there's dust coming up. I don't know if you guys can see, but quinacridone red slash magenta is a very light pigment, so it's very dusty. And it makes me nervous to, to work with. Not that it's like crazy toxic. I don't think it's crazy toxic, but you just don't want that stuff in your lungs. These are just regular flower scoops that I got at the store. Sometimes I don't know if I want a really light pink or if I want a dark pink. I mean, if I'm mixing on my palette, I guess I can always add a little bit more white to it. So maybe I do want it to be pretty dark. And again, this will change dramatically once I start mulling it. It's kind of shocking almost to see the color difference. Okay, so I think that's pretty well combined so that when I add my pigment, and I'm gonna make a little well. Again, just like if you were to make bread and you wanna put your eggs in it, you don't want things to, like have you guys ever made pasta before? It's very similar to that process. Just add a little bit here, mix it in. I think these colors are really just a gamble. Which is why I kind of suggest using one color, but I thought it would be fun for you guys to see all of these colors together. Question, mm -hmm. how did you end up making your own colors and color tubes? Co wait, well, how did you end up making your own colors? How did I end up making them? Well, like, deciding to oh, probably. Decide. Okay, so I really like the idea of just learning how to make things and process. So when I was at Boston University for my grad program, they offered an undergrad class actually that was painting techniques and they offered a section where it taught you they taught you how to make surfaces and 
how to make your own oil paint and um, encaustic and a tempera and traditional gesso and frescoes and it was just really cool. I love cooking. I love doing things that are very process oriented and you can understand the history of it and this kind of played into that. So it, I got really interested and I asked my professor at the time, Richard Raisless, amazing artist, uh, like, what are your thoughts on me doing this at home? And afterwards he's like super easy and he was really encouraging and I just kept doing it. So you can already see the color completely shifting because there's some orange in there. And this is a really beautiful pink that will look really good with this green. Oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. What other artist collaborations are you interested in, even hypothetical? Collaborations? Um, I love working with people. So working oh. on murals, maybe doing videos. I used to do video art myself and animations. So if I was able to, to work on something like that with people, that would be really cool. Um, it'd be fun to work with a writer and I could like illustrate something. That'd be fun. All right, so this probably won't fill up a whole tube, but I really like this color and I'm gonna just go for it. Because if I add other things to it, it could potentially mess that up. And again, I'm gonna get my molar. You wanna go for the one that has the bigger cir or like circumference, but I, uh, I don't know, this one has a different tempered nature on the bottom, so I think I'm gonna go for the smaller one. Yeah, that's exactly the pink I wanted. <laughs> again, I can take my mask off now. And that's essentially how you make oil paint, guys. It's not really complicated, it's just time consuming and you have to have all the materials like anything else. But once you have them, you needed a color, you can make it. Isn't that cool? All right, guys, um, unless, does anybody want to keep seeing me make this paint? It's pretty much the same thing over and over again, redundant. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you tuning in and hanging out. And please, if you have any questions, just you can email me or you can just hit me up in my DMs. And, I will get back to you as soon as possible with any kind of answer. Someone's have. asking for studio oh, tour. You want a studio tour? Um, okay. Let me take this off. Another comment. Please do demos to make other mediums like acrylics and tempera. That's actually all the same demo because you would just be combining... Um, pigment and water, which we would use all of the same equipment. We would just be using water instead of 
oil and then we would have binders which we would do um, an acrylic dispersion and then which is another medium that I don't have in my studio at the moment or if we were to do egg tempera we would just use some egg yolks maybe that actually would be really fun because I love doing egg tempera you just also need very specific surfaces to paint onto that so I don't know if I'm set up for that at the moment but I would be open to doing that at another time Okay, so behind me is a painting that I'm currently working on. And you can see it's pretty big. The setup for it is to my right here, which is constantly changing, only because it's been up for so long. Um, I have another area over here where I do my collages and I will also set up a big installation on this side. Here's a painting I worked on at home and then brought it in but it's on paper so I'm waiting to repair some of it. Uh, yeah there's just like you can see all of my plants and where I was working and when I was talking to you guys. I have a printing and etching press here for making my monotypes super cool. Oh, and I just got a kiln so I can fire and make more pottery in the studio, but I have to set that up because the wiring is not quite right yet. And then I have a library for art references and objects. And a little kitchenette that I made myself, which I'm super proud of. Well, I didn't like physically make it myself, but I had help. And then I had this rack here, which houses all of my paintings that need to be made. Yeah, so. Hopefully. Do you make fabric or textiles? Do I have fabric? Do you or make them? I do actually, and I have them hanging up on this wall. So what I'll do is I'll do my digital uh, drawings and prints and make patterns and wallpaper and then I'll print them on fabric and I'll use them in my setups and installations. Any other questions? I think that's it. All right. Thanks guys. See you tomorrow.